Hello. 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 Welcome. How are you now, Tim? Good. Good. How are you, Chris? I'm I'm super excited because I'm on Nauto's Nerdy Power Hour. Yes. Yes. You don't get to you don't get to join this as much, right? Not no. And I well, and I'm even more excited because I get to be a real boy on this show. I'm not a yeah. puppet. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I I totally forgot the puppet. It's it's in uh, it's sitting there. No one's sad that you forgot the puppet. Oh, I should have just like put up put up like right behind me. If if um, nobody knows what we're talking about, you need to go back and watch our episode of uh, Sharp Knives Rock. Yeah. Uh, episode four, because I make an appearance in in felt form. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, well, welcome uh, whoever um, everyone's watching. Welcome to the show. Today's uh, today's we haven't done this a uh, nerd hour for about in a month now. Um, because you know, as the uh, as society society start to go back normal, and you know, we have more uh, people going back to work and all such, we decided to um, you know uh, cut down the, the production on the live shows a little bit more. But um, so we do it every once a month, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, once a month for the for your show, but we're mm -hmm. still doing a a weekly live stream. Yeah. Um, so you can either catch uh, Japanese Knife 101 with Kevin and uh, Lordy, um, mm -hmm. or this wonderful show with yourself and uh, yeah. your uh, your guest host, depending on who that is. Usually Nathan. Um, yeah. And there, uh, you guys hosted the last uh, Sharpening Night in Canada, didn't you? Oh yeah, the uh, Nathan was the uh, main, and I was I, I called. You were his assistant. Yeah. And then once a month, we're not doing one in August, but. Uh, we're in the plannings for Sharp Knives Rock episode five mm -hmm. um, in September. I think it's going to be September 20th, uh, which is a Monday, not a Tuesday that week. And uh, yeah, we have some super exciting stuff planned that maybe we'll talk about a little bit later. Yeah. And the, for those of you who's uh, waiting to see the uh, interview coming out, uh, which I did with the uh, three young blacksmith, they are almost ready. Nice. All, they, all we need to do is put the English subtitles. So we edit it, edit it down, and we edit it, we uh, put some like cool, you know, B-rolls and the background music and the sound effect in. Um, it became actually about 35 minutes from the two and a half hours. Nice. So it's pretty good. And uh, all we have to do is the uh, do some of the subtitle the part. Um, translation work, which, uh, which should probably take another uh, five days or so. Um, so hopefully uh, by the uh, by the end of this week to early next week we'll have that the full um, interview ready to show on this channel on YouTube. Sweet, I'm excited for that. I would love to help you translate, but my Japanese is non-existent. So yes, yeah. Well, you can read our very bad English, and I can. <laughs> Uh, no, the, your English is so much better than anything that I could do in Japanese. So, <laughs> well, today's episode uh, for those of you who love the uh, who enjoys my kind of um, nerdy hour power hour. Today's episode is something that we've been uh, we've been asked for very for quite a while, and uh, I needed some, some time to do a little bit more research. I did manage to talk to a uh, Masashi Fujiara-san, the uh, very popular, famous uh, kitchen uh, or sharpener, kitchen knife sharpener uh, in Japan, uh, who I actually learned a lot from. Uh, so I was like basically talking, texting each other about the natural stones and uh, found a few things that we I didn't quite know. And we, we can share that information with all of you today, actually. So it's kind of you know fun, right? I'm excited. And I think everyone else is excited. There was lots of uh, lots of chatter um, on our Discord. Uh, mm -hmm. for those of you that don't follow us on Discord, um, the uh, the link will be in our uh, mm -hmm. in our description. Uh, you can come join us for some some super nerdy chats there uh, about sharpening and whatnot as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for those of you who uh, who don't really know. Where today we are talking about Japanese natural stones. So, sweet. So, yeah. 
So what what's, that, what's, what's natural stone? What's that's the different from that the rock you found on the coast of the uh, Vancouver Island <laughs> or <laughs> the uh, rock that you find on, you know, the on the boat by the Bow River or yeah. Saskatchewan River for, for your case, Chris? Yeah, right? how come I can't just use that to sharpen? Yeah. Well, it's well, in order for the, those rocks to grind the steel, you need something hard, right? To grind the steel off. That's pretty easy. Synthetic stones, you know what they're made out of, right? They are made out of something like a uh, ceramic or something like a cement type of material. And they put abrasive in it. And those abrasive often be like a uh, chromium oxide or the uh, aluminum oxide, white almina. Um, which is pretty hard material. And what they do is they, um, for synthetic uh, ones, they basically break those abrasive down into small uh, sizes and they sift them, right? So, you know, those are coarse 220 grit. These are 1,000 grit. These are 8,000 grit and those kind of stuff. And they mix them in um, to make the, um, make the uh, synthetic sharpening stones, right? Natural stones are, well, basically, as you can kind of see, these are sedimentary rocks. I was looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> you know, sedimentary, ro sedimentary rocks, right? It's got some lines. It comes in the sediments. So they are formed in the bottom of ocean. Usually, they are so-called... I'm gonna do the a little cheating right here, because the uh, some. I think that's allowed. Some Japanese words I. So the uh, base of these stones, are usually so-called. It's the uh, they actually use them for the. Uh, foundation as well for uh, makeup foundation as well. Really? Uh, but uh, those, those mud stones uh, with a go. Okay, detected Chinese. So it's Japanese, come on. <laughs> so sericite. Sericite. Sericite is the uh, type of the um, uh, sediments that's been, it's very fine, um, fine sediments and it actually flakes off pretty easy on one direction. So these stones actually have to be cut and used one um, part more than they say, say for example, you can't use a- You can't use the side, you gotta cut On the side. Yeah. Because these are like very, they, they flake off, right? Right. As you use them. So that's, that's how they're made out of. So what is the abrasive? What is actually cutting a, uh, cutting this? Stone. Oh, the steel. Any any idea? Uh, well, I'm a, I'm assuming it's some kind of rock, but I'm no geologist. So, mm. what what kind of rock besides sedimentary? Because sedimentary is obviously made up of a whole bunch of different things depending on where you are. Um, yeah. In the well, world, sedimentary basically means it's a sediment, right? Like it just yeah. layers them up, right? In those sedimentary rocks, there are bunch of so like it's it's a hint is that the chemical composition of this material or this thing is uh sio2 sio2 silica so basically di silica dioxide yeah two two oxygen to one silica yeah right also known as quartz quartz oh okay yeah so it's quartz stones Yes, it's a cork. So quartz, bunch of quartz are in those stones. Interesting. And where do those quartz come from? That, that I don't know. That is the one we, Chris, we did a little bit of a translation thing before we actually oh, went into that. Right? Yeah, so you said, oh. uh, what was the word you gave me? Radiolaria. So, radiolaria. Which are radiolaria. gross looking tiny little bugs, basically like plankton. I mean, Tiny bit of bugs or the uh, yeah single cell um, algae. Some some people call it algae. It's like yeah. it's like those bugs looking and it's got the spikes tip, 
type of stuff. Yeah. And these are made out of silica. The body is made out of silica. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as they are buried under with these different, you know, sediments or mud, what happens is that they they get you know, they get squished, and yeah. the uh, those silica type of material over time it becomes more like um. Slightly different from the um, fossilization, because fossilization will replace whatever into mineral, right? Yes. But the silica, it, it's kind of fossilization, but it's it, it's there. Look what I found. What did you find? I found ah, a picture. What is that? Oh, that's, I have the radio, that's what radio Laria looks yeah. like. So that's what it look, looks like. So you're so, telling me that those weird little bugs make up natural yeah. sharpening stones? In, in in any of those stones, that's crazy. Especially especially ones that's the out of the um, what you call it the uh, 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 out of Kyoto, the uh, like Maruyama, uh, some Nakayama, and the some Tamba. These are all the same kind of uh, abrasives. Mm -hmm. So, if all the abrasives are quartz, right, come from the not all all of them, or but quartz that that is in that the thing. What makes some stones finer than others? Uh, that I don't know. Is it how hard it is and how quickly it breaks down or is it just the actual sediment is different sizes? So here, this is the, this is what I, I think. So there, there's, a, there's a few theories, but here's what I think. The finer stone, finer stones have much harder, uh, usually harder a um, harder abrasive well, or the adhesives, basically, yeah. right? For example, we have this Ozuku, known for very fine, very hard stone. Yeah. And in comparison, we have this Shiro Suita. It's very nice and fine, but it's it's a little bit softer, and it's not as fine as the Ozuku. If though both has the very similar abrasive in it, what makes a difference is that the how fast this foundation rock will yeah. wear. Oh, okay. Right? So as this rock starts to wear down faster, it will expose more quartz, right? Yeah. So that there is not much time for the quartz to break it down to smaller pieces. Oh. Where harder stones like Ozuku, they take a little bit longer to expose those quartz out. So I was just gonna show you a little bit really quick. A little bit of um, difference here. So when you're sharpening on something that's really soft, let's start from the uh, the shiro Sharp, here. Soft, soft. Okay. So when you're sharpening on the softer, oh, this is terrible. Um, you got a wiggly table. Yeah, table to actually sharpen it with, like as you can see on. The... So, the Damon's softer... wondering if he should use his uh, his quartz countertop at home. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I I will spill my coffee. I'm just gonna. Put Don't it. spill your coffee. You need that. So as you as I move my the knife on the stone, really light on the uh, this uh, shiro suita here. Yeah you quickly start to see this little mud slurry right? that builds up really, really quick. Basically, what it means is that this, um, this stone, the foundation of the stone itself is quite soft so that it exposes more new abrasive out faster, right? Yeah. Where if you are going to sharpen them on the... Something like a uh, ozuku without doing anything by say by mean uh, without putting on the um, putting on what you call it the uh, something like um, um, putting the, um, <laughs> sorry nagura or anything like right, that yeah. or you know doing making a slurry. Um, what happens is that it takes a little bit longer to build the slurry. Yeah. And by mean, 
but little bit of a slurry will break down into smaller pieces as you work on them. And so the more you push that slurry around, the finer it gets, which yeah. means the nicer it polishes it, right? Yeah. I know there's a video out there of um, Iwasaki-san doing mm -hmm. a, uh, a Kamasori very, very slowly. And yeah. you can see him just pushing that mud back and forth over and over again. And yeah. I remember visiting him and watching that just to, to get it to break down more and more and more. Mm -hmm. um, and he said it was really about how much time you spent breaking that down to get it to the right uh, kind of consistency. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about these uh, uh, quartz is that the uh, fundamental, like if you look, if you find the uh, natural like quart, quartz crystal, what's the what's the shape? What's the uh, what's the what's the shape? Oh, that, that I think, I quartz know. crystal. So they usually form this a um, hexa six hexa. Yes, they do. I just googled it. Hexagon. Yeah. So they become a hexagon in natural, not much like spiky per se. No, they kind of have right. a bunch of flat sides. Yeah. So they make a very um, mild type of edge with the uh, those stones, natural stones that you uh, you sharpen it. Where, like, basically, if you look at the uh, chromium oxide or aluminum oxide, they could make, become very small. Yeah. 8,000 grits and stuff. But the potentially, the well, the uh, the crystal is actually a little bit more spiky. So it has more edges on it. So it's more yeah. likely to scratch as opposed to a little bit make more. And polish. Yeah. That makes sense. But because it breaks the uh, this natural stone breaks it down to in different um, rate and speed. Yeah. You don't get any like very consistent mirror polish to it. No, you get a much kind of like foggier finish, yeah. right? I mean, if you work really long, you may actually get a very nice. Um, like if you break it down to super, super fine all consistently, yeah. You may be able to get very nice edge to it too, like look to it. But uh, generally speaking, you never get like mirror polish. Right. Yeah, nice. So I have like some, some like, you know, we have very limited selection and collection of the stones as well as the, uh, you know, like for sales as well. But we, we can talk a little bit about the, you know, little bit difference here so we have this like it's it's out of the out of screen right now <laughs> you can't oh. just throw it around it doesn't <sighs> weigh anything does it this gigantic rock don't break your table no yeah hey and he used this as an office table as well <laughs> <laughs> this here is the so-called can you move the stones that are in front of it so you can slide it forward a little bit so we can see like if you move those over, you just slide it forward. Just you'll have to reach when you sharpen, but a little bit more, a little bit. Stop! 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 Yeah, that thing is amazing. Yeah. So this one here is the uh, school Akamon Mai, the uh, stone that is the most Japanese natural stones. A lot of them now are uh, fine stones, like you know, eight thousand grits and such. This particular one. Is about equivalent of the uh, like one thousand. Um, also, it's fairly coarse. Two thousand, pretty coarse. Basically, though, what I said earlier, coarse basically means they wear fast. Right. Right. Because the abrasive itself is not necessarily coarser. Depends on how fast they expose that the uh, right. um, the what you call it the. The quartz in it? The quartz, yeah. And so it just it basically just means that it's gonna break down yeah faster. And it's like as you may able to may be able to see, I can just like change the uh the angle. Move that angle up. Yeah. Damon says this is the Thanos of natural stones. Here. You can see a little bit better this way. So as you can see, it's you can see a lot more um, 
mud or the slurry faster. Generally speaking, the coarser that the stone is, um, you will see more wider. Um, so black usually, the, uh, the slurry, if it's super black, that's usually more steel. Oh, okay. Right? Steel is black. Right? Yeah. Where um, if you see more white slurry, that is more stones wearing down. Right. Makes sense though, right? Yeah. Those mud stones or stones wearing out. Uh, that means it's slightly more coarser. Okay. So if you actually see, um, I don't know if you actually could see it, but um, again, Ozuku, known yeah. for super hard, yeah. um, being super hard. And I hate this. I should have set up this at my sharpening station, <laughs> but I had to uh, have to clean up pretty good. <laughs> so you don't really see these slurries yet. Sometimes you force the slurry to come out. So with that stone, mm -hmm. um, I think my my natural question would be: What nagura would you use to make a slurry on it, and and why? So there are a few ways. Nagura is really so. Nagura is to create the slurry, but it's not the. Um, so if you want to actually just get the this slurry here, yeah. What you want to use is the, the like diamond plate. Oh, okay. Because it doesn't leave any residue behind. Exactly. So if you want to make it the just a slurry, just use the. Uh, that. Just use the diamond plate to bring up the mud. Yeah, that is slurry of the uh, this ozu. That makes sense. What the nagura stone does is that the nagura stone will smother this stone onto the, the different stone. Right. So making this grit on the stone. Yeah. That makes it a little bit faster to work with. So basically, you're like mostly you're sharpening with this stone. Okay. Right? So that's the grit that you have on there that's exactly. And again, as I said, if you want to have the real slurry on the Ozuku, use this diamond plate. Right? So I think that kind of answers this question, but he Sven is asking, does the macro structure of the stone play a significant role when sharpening on natural stones or is it primarily the slurry that's doing the heavy lifting and it's, it's is it the slurry that's doing most of the the actual steel polish yeah, yeah 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 but is the stone is the stone sharpening is it removing much steel the which which stone like the, the actual stone that you're putting it on. So the uh, like right now when you put it on the uh, natural stone, is it mm -hmm. mostly just the mud that's doing the work, the slurry? Yes. Well, there yeah. are some like small abrasives, but this this one definitely. That one. Harder that is, yes. Like you are working this slurry, slurry, slur, slurry. <laughs> you break it down in small pieces. Yeah. It's slightly different when it comes to the uh, bit more coarser stones, right? Because coarser stones are, they work more like a, uh, they, like regular sharpening stones. Like this right. guy here, it, they break down, expose more um, newer um, abrasives. Yeah. And that, that grinds that the steel off. So I think that the answer, as with it, it seems to be to me that the answer with natural stones is always, it depends on the stone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And some, um, so Kyoto is very famous place for the natural stone, as you may know. I do know. We have a regular here in the shop who um, every so often they block off the river in Kyoto to clean it out. And hmm. uh, he goes quite regularly when they do that to go pick for stones at the bottom of the river. And he has hmm. a huge collection of natural stones. He's a, he's a woodworker. Uh, oh. that trained in Japan and goes and he's the only person I know that whenever I run into him, it doesn't matter if it's the grocery store or wherever he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a rock and says, have you seen this one? <laughs> That's uh, yeah, you have to find the, uh, well, I don't know if the Kamogawa river does that, but the, uh, find the right river, right? Yeah. The, um, there are two different, um, 
areas in Kyoto that's really famous for natural stones. That's uh, Western mountains like um, like a uh, Atago, um, Nakayama, and those mountains that were originally famous for the uh, uh, natural stones. Yeah. And now it's kind of started to move to the eastward, uh, westward. Um, they they say western and uh, eastern stones. Uh, yeah. It's it's relative relative location to Kyoto, so it's not like you know it's really yeah. really far. Um, but a little bit of a uh, little bit of mound change. They will definitely change the uh, characteristics of stone as well, right? Because you know like it's it's thousands of years or million not millions but you know, hundreds hundreds of thousands of years difference if it's like yeah. You know, Is it a newer mountain difference. or an older mountain? Yeah. So, um, so generally speaking, the Higashimono or uh, the eastern ones are a little bit more harder. Uh, western ones are a little bit more softer. Western ones are like a uh, Maruyama, like a uh, Shirosuita, like these. I f keep forgetting there's uh, actually a better camera right yeah. there. Um, Maruyama Shirosuita and things like that. Um, or something like a, um, yeah, some uh, Suita and stuff like that. Um, the eastern part, uh, mm -hmm. something like um, Ozuku, um, Ohira. Yeah. Uh, Ohira's a uh, Uchigumori is the 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 stone to polish their uh, the swords with. Yeah. Something that uh, you have to be some of you who like to uh, know more about Japanese natural stones. Something that you want to know is that the what what me, what it means by Motoyama. The hon, honyama, honyama. Honyama? Honyama, yes. What does that mean? Honyama um, meant, before, honyama meant a uh, the, the mountain owned by the uh, Honma family. Oh. And that was the, uh, it was one of those, one of the uh, biggest, the uh, natural stone miner and owned a few mountain. Yeah. And that was known for the best, one of the best quality natural uh, stone available. And they, you know, because it's home, the mountain that was owned by Honma-san, Honma-yama, and short for the Hon-yama. Um, <laughs> but the uh, now a lot of stones that's coming out from the Kyoto, whether it's that actually mountain or not, it's actually called, some, some call it Hon-yama. Hon-yama Hon also means the uh, true mountain, and they kind of associate that name, true mountain, or the tr the, the, um, True means you know like real or the yeah. uh, the, it's the OG yeah. mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So um something like this, it's called it says Honyama on them, but Honyama doesn't really mean anything anymore. Oh okay. <laughs> so uh, that's something that you have to be a little bit more careful about because the uh, Nakayama there is a mountain name so as the Honyama. Yeah. There's a mountain called Nakayama which is very rare. And Nakayama is the one of those uh, stones that's very rare and considered to be the best. And like best for, you know, few things, right? right. Not best for everything. There isn't any stone that best for everything. There's natural no one magic stone. No. Natural stones are generally, though, known for a uh, used by the um, sword polishers as well as the uh, carpenters. And still huge in Japan yeah. for those carpenters to use natural stones with. Not so much on the kitchen knives, although you know there are fair, fair uh, number of people who you who likes to use the natural stones for sharpening their, uh, you know, kitchen knives, especially for the professional, um, you know, washoku or the uh, Japanese food cooks too, right? Yeah. But the what is what is the biggest difference? Like, what's the biggest characteristic difference between if I sharpened my kitchen knife with a natural stone versus a synthetic stone? As, as I said, the one thing that I would notice. As I said, the um, the because the abrasive of the quartz, they are not as spiky, or they are much more milder, right? Especially, say for example, if you or I'm gonna actually sharpen this one. Um, I was sharpening the bevel first, but I'm just going to actually sharpen at the edge with this one. Make sure you have a little bit of mud on there. A little bit of mud on this one here. Because sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get the uh, mud going. Yeah. 
the mud, the white mud now on that stone will start to actually become more like a dark black. Um, you know, it's as it pulls the steel out. It is, yeah. Removing the steel off with the uh, and work a fair bit because the um, also it was like someone was saying, you know, like um, as you go f finer on the stone, you have to actually work longer strokes or so the more strokes. And that makes sense. You are making this um, abrasive or the quartz break down into smaller pieces. Right. Right. I've so got a I question said, from, I bet you I'm going to say that wrong, but I think it's Shabon um, asking what type of natural stones those are. I think they missed it. Um, you're working on the Ozuku right now? Ozuku, yeah. Ozuku Awasedo, which is the finishing stone. Right. But I have the, one of those stones that I quite like for straight razors. Oh, yeah. The, you know why they're great for straight razors or the uh, carpentry tools? No. I just know that I like them. Mm -hmm. That all relates to the what type of the uh, crystal that quartz makes, right? Yeah. Rather than super, super spiky um, material abrasives that synthetic stones are using. So what happens is that as you work more on those natural stones and breaks the uh, this abrasive or the quartz down to into smaller um, pieces, um, you're making the edge very very mild. Right. It's not like spikes. Right? It's like really mild edge like this. With that, it's great for things to. Um, like for kitchen knives, often when you use kitchen knives, you slide to use them, right? Yeah. But the, uh, and for sliding action, it's actually nice to have a little bit of teeth. Yeah. Where stray razors, you don't want to slice your face up. <laughs> no. No. No, and you're, you're pushing, you're not yes. slicing. Yes. So as carpentry sense. tools, a lot of carpentry tools. Yeah, if you think like a chisel, it's a push action. Yeah. It's not a, not a also, slice and cutting action. Oh, this also the planes too, right? Right. So that's why those natural stones are very favorited by those a uh, uh, carpentries carpenters. That makes sense. So what that means is that this edge will become very mild, very. It's almost like a shim bread knife. <laughs> right. So it has the it has kind of those rounded yeah. Wavy type of edge. Yeah. Um actually I'm gonna draw that out because I can remember seeing this once. Oh man, I am bad at drawing. <laughs> but can you see that now, Toe? So the I top actually, edge is your actually, synthetic yeah. stone. And all of your scratch marks kind of go in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is your natural stone and it gives you an edge that's a little bit kind of more rounded. Yeah. And so there's less there's less snagging, right? Yeah. That makes sense to me. And what's great for kit like what type of knife that's great for this a uh, type of edge is Yanagi. Oh, yeah. Because you were just cutting into this fresh piece of uh, fish without any bones yeah. or uh, yeah, anything, the skin. You don't so want any tearing. This, yeah, it, this will just going to, yeah, slides, glides into this, this uh, piece of fish really, really nice. That's why I can get my pepperoni so thin. Mm. <laughs> That's what I use my yanagi at home the most for is slicing uh like salami and charcuterie and that kind of stuff. Right. I need to eat more fish is, is the truth. Yeah. Just change your uh, weekly uh, steak dinner to some, some fish. Oh, I can't, I can't not have my <laughs> weekly steak though. <laughs> I should, ju I just need to make it surf and turf. I just need to add fish to it. Yeah. Here you go. So how's it, how's it turning out? Are you it's, doing the hand strop? 
Yes. Yeah. It's a little known fact that Nauto's hands are made out of cordovan leather, and that's why they're so good for stropping. Anyone can do this. <laughs> I got this trick from the uh, this Masashi Amoto-san. He's, oh. he's like, here, it's it's soft. <laughs> the first time I saw it was uh, at um, uh, Iwasaki. Oh, what, was he doing it? Yeah. yeah. He, sh he sharpened a straight razor that they made um, while we were standing there. And yeah. then he strapped it on his hand, and then he handed it to me, and he apologized and said, this isn't very sharp, because normally I don't sharpen in the shop. It's too dusty. <laughs> and I tested it on my arm, and it was probably the sharpest thing I'd ever touched. Right. <laughs> so the uh, edge, um, it's really hard to see. Um, pretty good. It's pretty smooth. It's very quiet, certainly. The... Um, because again, it's not really, uh, it's like really cutting very smoothly yeah. into things. Yeah. If I work a little bit more, it probably gets. I'm cleaning up a little more. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, that's really the difference. Any questions, like, you know, as I was working on the. Uh, things any any comments that's uh, um well grant is saying this uh that it really helped explain when toothiness is helpful or not um mm -hmm. and how to achieve the desired result so he's he's happy to learn that yeah i think that that's something that people don't necessarily take into account all mm -hmm. the time when sharpening the difference between having something toothy um versus having something really smooth i mm -hmm. think like i had a uh, a chef in this morning who had mm -hmm. four of those big like standard kitchen portuguese isil knives yeah and he was in a hurry and i did a a pretty rough sharpen yeah. um on them because he needed them on the fly it was literally you know the coarse wheel and the fine wheel yeah, yeah, um yeah. and i had a tomato sitting there and he tested it and he's like wow you did that so fast and it goes through the tomato skin and i went well yeah because it's toothy yeah. it uh you know if i'd polished those guys really smooth they would have felt very thick and clunky but mm. because they've got some teeth on it, they'll rip through tomato skin, no problem. Yeah, yeah. And when he does his pepper prep later, it'll be easy. Oh yeah, yeah. Like so, it's like really case by case, right? The yeah. uh, I don't think not everyone needs a uh, natural stone. That's very. Yeah, but it's fun to play with, right? I think yeah. that's what it is more than yeah. anything. It's get if you like sharpening and you want to, you know, experiment with stuff. Yeah. Get yourself a natural stone. Um, and yeah, yeah, uh, also with us, what the what you like to do with the natural stones? Yeah, as I said, we do have the those natural stones that's pretty soft. Like we don't, unfortunately, we don't sell this guy. Yeah. But the um, you know, relatively soft, and often we do have the very hard ones. We do often have this one at the Kent of Inglewood, which we you know mainly uh, sharpen or finishes straight razors with. Sometimes we do have the uh, stock of the uh, this Tamba Auto. Uh, stones like some call, call it blue stones. Yeah. These ones are relatively softer, right? The uh, softer stones, they they do make the um, some we call it the Kasumi finish. The um, it's not the uh, you know store Calgary Storm yeah. Manager Kasumi, but uh, what what I'm call it? It's it's nice, really nice contrast between the uh, the hard steel and the soft steel. Hard steel polishes a little bit more, and the softer steel um, gets a little bit more um, smoky type of stuff. Right. If you want that kind of stuff, we can recommend some stones. Um, Do you think, um, when this person's saying, I think it's Sean, um, that uh, you know they feel that when they sharpen with their uh, – the Nakoto stones, um, that the edge seems to last a little bit longer and then it's less resistant to rolling. Do mm -hmm. you think that that's just, you know, is that based on the using the natural stones or is it based on something else? The uh, natural stone miner, they say it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They, they say it's going to last, the edge will last longer. Yeah. The, uh, this probably is due to the type of, again, abrasive. Yeah. Instead of really spiky, fine edge, it will make it a little bit milder, right? Yeah, I was wondering about that too. If you've got a really spiky edge, it might be easier for those to yeah. start to roll over. Yeah. 
And it, the, the spikes will break, right? Then, yeah. So I think that is something to do that has to do with the abrasive that they use. Yeah. The um, lots of miners, they didn't have the, uh, when I asked some of the, uh, you know, the people who owns the uh, mine, right? Yeah. Uh, they don't have, they don't usually have very clear answers because they do mine stones. They don't necessarily, they may use stones, but they don't use the tools that they sharpen. Right. You know what I mean? Like they, they do sharpen. They know how to sharpen the kitchen knives, but, but they, they are usually them. the ones that they don't usually use kitchen knives at home. Or they are not the ones that they use the plain blades and the carpentry. Right. So right? they know how to sharpen them, but they don't necessarily use them. Yeah. So, um, so they tell me that the, yeah, sharpening by natural stones will extend the life. Yeah. of the, the edge and partly i believe it because you know they have been doing it for a very long time yeah right so they know they know what's up but the um but it's probably due to the uh, type of edge that you're creating or you're putting on yeah. um but not necessarily hmm. some people call like say like because you're actually doing this you're hardening the edge Oh really? I don't think it's true. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how that would happen. Tiny bit though, like massage son was saying, the uh, this bit of friction, yeah, will uh, heat up the heat the steel up a little bit. Yeah, and so called surface hardness will increase tiny bit. Huh? Tiny bit. That was the uh, blacksmith massage son. Yeah. So if I push too hard on a um on the wheel, every once in a while you feel the uh. The knife get hot. Surface hardness, maybe, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, don't 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 push it too hard so that you you know to the point that you can't touch the knife. Right. That's hard. That's hot. Yeah, that's too hot. Yeah. Grant's asking if uh somebody uses synthetic stones and then a leather strop, will that make an edge more like using a natural stone? The again Leather strop, if you put the abrasives like a, a chromium oxide, uh, you're making a very fine, but the, uh, it's quite a bit different type of edge. Yeah. What if it was just straight leather? Do you think that that would, that would feel more like a natural stone? Mm. I'd have to look at leather under a microscope to know if it was... Because leather doesn't have the abrasives, right? Yeah, it's just pulling burrs off. It's not yeah. really... Yeah, so... I doubt it, but the um, it's not. Yeah, I don't think you get a very similar edge to the uh, natural stone. Yeah. Um, here's something I've never heard of before. Your thoughts on artificial auto? Oh yeah, the artificial auto is the uh, we used to have one. Did we? Yeah, the uh, the uh, Naniwa blue stone. Oh okay. Actually, we got the uh, we got this one. Yeah, artificial auto is great. We actually really like that. It. It's it actually has the little bit of auto powder in it, so it's oh, got a natural okay. stone in it. Yeah, right. So it does really really nice. Uh, nice. Uh, if you push it really hard, it will give you really nice a uh, kasumi on a stainless clad and a carbon steel. Oh, okay. That's what I had experience with. So yeah, they are great. The um, the they don't sell that particular stone from Naniwa. Like some some other maker may make it. Naniwa yep. was making the uh, you know blue stone uh, synthetic auto with the auto powder natural powder in it. Um, now they are selling it as a Naniwa traditional two thousand. So they are selling. Oh, okay. okay. Some marketing strategy that they they change right. a little bit. So so. Yeah. For those of you who may want to grab the uh, natural uh, synthetic auto, uh, traditional 2000 is that the same stuff? the same one. Yeah. Yeah, by saying it's it's more affordable to get one of those than a, uh, a true natural stone. Right. Well, the auto this size is not going to be that expensive. No, they're not bad. Auto is not too bad. The uh, Sunda... 
uh, finer stones are pretty expensive found because you know lots of like just so you know like a lot of mines are have already been closed right also mm -hmm. mountains being closed yeah i think only active mountain that's still uh, excavating is this uh, maroyama really i think yeah and he's great because he's got a son um doing the uh passing down his uh, his torch as well yeah yeah grant's asking if the uh the powders they're just crushed up stone often yeah 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 like i do have some powders depends on who you ask right oh i do have a few powders kicking in my sharpening station that is my uh um uchigomori powder yeah to get the nice uh, kasumi on it um yeah so these are usually broken down powders. I'll show you something that we sometimes have. Um, this uh, Takeda finger stone, the, no, the yeah. uh, Nagura type of stuff. Yeah. How Takeda sharpens his knives is the, uh, you know, he finishes with the uh, these stones here, put on top some like plate and do the bevel like this, right? He's got like a box he uses, doesn't he? That the knife sits on? Uh, the, the plank of wood. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you can do this. You can do you know a few other ways. You can use this to uh, for the nagura as well, like this, right? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, maybe. I'm always scared that I'm gonna push too hard when I do that. Oh, just put tack your fingers. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've watched his video probably a hundred times. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I I love that video. It's very calming. Because he says things like back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then reminds you to tuck your fingers under. Sven says he uh, he likes to he finishes sharpening with the same natural stone for all his knives, and then he mm -hmm. drops the knife afterwards on stones with different hardness depending on what edge they want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do <laughs> find that it, having a harder stone to do a quick drop on at the end. Uh, is a nice way to to finish stuff. Definitely, deburring is great, and also yeah. the. Uh, but also, um, as I said, I think the really the key of the uh, very hard natural stones for for them to work the best is the uh, those abrasives break it down into smaller pieces as yeah. they work on longer, right? So um, it still works, and it probably does a really good job. But in order for the to get a potential of that, the really hard natural stones to work, um, I think mud and uh, slurry will do the uh, better job. Right. That's what I think. And again, natural stone finishes are very, um, very unique. It doesn't. It's not always the same, um, and it it's not always the same with the uh, different steels. Yeah, it really depends on from steel to steel what finish you're going to get, right? Yeah. I'm very curious to – so in the interview that we I, I did with the uh, – um, who is it? The um, uh, Monaka-san, Nigara-san, Onigara, Yoshizawa-san, and, uh, and uh, Miyazaki-san. Yeah. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a preview, but um, his – who the uh, Monaka-san's favorite steel – as a blacksmith, is ZDP-189. Which to me is crazy. Isn't yeah. it ridiculously hard to work with? Yeah, yeah. And he, he forged welds in the house, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, the, he, he's, uh, what he told me is that he's got, so he, th he thought ZDP-189 doesn't really work with the uh, natural stones. I don't know what natural stones he used. But the one that he made, and he thought, you know, natural stone may work, but the, the one that he sharpened with natural stones got this crazy edge that he was, like, scared. <laughs> <laughs> he, That's he my favorite like, kind of sharp. Yeah, he was, like, testing on his nails, and he was like, that was the type of knife that he, he got so scared that he had to pull his knife off almost felt like it's going through the nail and cut into uh, skin type of thing. Uh, 
Yeah. So I'm like, ah, that's that's scary. And that I've scary. only experienced mostly with the uh, machine made ZDP 189, right? Like yeah. a, um, the Miyabi Black. And they, I never had really like good impression with that particular steel or the particular knife. Yeah. I always found that you could, you know, you can make them decently sharp. Yeah. And they would definitely, they always felt toothy. Yeah. And they would stay that way forever. They stay that way for like really laser beams. But when it needs to be sharpened, that's pain. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm really curious to what uh, what Monaka san can make with the DP 189. Yeah. Um, it's probably about a year or so because, you know, he has to work on and stuff like that. But yeah. hopefully we will see something cool. Well, we'll have some Monaka san's knife soon. That's cool. for sure. There's as a coming. part of Small Makers. Yeah. Month. And that was the you know feature. That's why we did an interview, right? We did a yeah. uh, three blacksmith interview. Also, we did the uh, interview with the Mariyama-san, right? Who is the uh, the sharpener of the Hado Sakai? Yep. It was it was great. I, I just finished editing it, so just so you know, I finished editing. Nice. <laughs> I'm putting some music and some fun stuff. Hopefully, be ready on YouTube sometime next week, um, as well. Sweet. We shoulder shoulder interview but it's, it was fun it was fun video to uh do uh something to do with or well, to do with because yep. he speaks very similar dialect as i do so um, oh, nice like, have another nice chat about the uh you know anything you know things that things like i ask him is like what are you what are you looking for after work like what, what, what do you look for after work every day he's like um alcohol <laughs> He, he nice. loves drinking. He like he likes to have a good time. Yeah, he loves drinking like sake and whiskey. That's what he said. So. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. I would like to go back to Japan. And yeah, and some have a good time with blacksmiths and sharpeners, and you know, in a contrast, on in a country, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, what you call it? The it's it's a little bit of a spoiler, but um, uh, those three young blacksmiths. Uh, what they what they uh, look for after work is the uh, their kids. Oh, nice. That's the sweet. That's, that's me now. Yeah. It, the thing is, you look for your kids and you find them, and then you find <laughs> them for a while, and then you look for alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the issues also are saying. <laughs> yes. Uh, so D Hop three ten says mm. that uh, they just picked up a Natsuya and a Shiro Suita. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion? Sure, sweet, that's fantastic, especially when you're trying to make a um, make the uh, kasumi on him. Yeah. Natsuyato, I have actually no experience with. Yeah. But from the look of it, Natsuyato looks more like a um, amakusato, which is these guys. Yeah. Uh, so it's like good medium grit stone. Yeah. How it looked like from the, the uh, from the picture. So um, it's good medium grit, like. 1500 to 2000 type of grit. Um, I think it's going to do really well. Just be careful that the, um, the well, especially Shiro Suita. Suita basically means is that the, uh, that um, the, the Su means is one of those, the brown spots right yeah. here that doesn't really grind your steel. And this is the sediments of the uh, this part that doesn't do, and the good part that's like more uh, grayish color. So once you reach, uh, once you keep uh, um, flattening and reach to this orangey type of spot, you you have to grind it down. Oh, okay, because it's just not going to cut anything. Yeah, so you lose quite a bit. Yeah. But just so you know, that's good. To know. And if you see some a. Um, um, so-called geo hiku or the uh, some super hard, um, big um, type of I guess um, big abrasive type of stuff on the stone that's been buried yeah. and sharpen the bevel and you see the one like streak that if that's creating a streak, yeah, you should dig that on out. Right. Using the chisels or something. So you gotta break it out so that it doesn't just scratch everything up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's good to know. But it's it's great stone. The uh, Shirosuita, I love the Shirosuita. 
I, I, we have been asking to get it. It's, it's just that demand is really high. Yeah. I've, I have been bugging the, uh, the such a high son about this. Like once in a while, like just remind, remind him, Hey, we like to get some. <laughs> hey, we're over here. Can we have some? Yeah. 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 You have some? Oh, okay. Oh, next time. Oh, yeah, sure. Next time. Okay. Just let me know. And month, month after, month later. Hey, it's Jason. How are you? We're such good time at the, the cafe in, in at Kyoto. You took us. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Remember me? We had fun. Send me rocks. I think he's having fun with everyone, though. That, that's the yeah. Problem. That that's the, yeah. There's too many people to have fun with. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. Like we we had a really nice night. I think good time. The uh, it was weird. Um, I borrowed my mom's car because I was by myself in Japan, and for some reason she wanted to come with me. Nice. I'm like yeah, sure. I'll do my <laughs> business, but you can just you know do the little. You just hang out, mom. Yeah, hang out. But it was kind of fun, and he took took us to the lunch after, and you know, it's a, it's, it's fine. <laughs> any any comments, questions that um, surfaced? As Buckle here is saying that uh, they haven't gotten used to their Natsuya yet, um, but they hear that they are an amazing, amazing for polishing, mm -hmm. and supposedly uh, you get a much finer looking polish mm. uh, than the approximate grit range would suggest. Right. Um, Sven is saying, uh, are there any reliable ways to tell which strata the stone is from? Uh, he has a stone where I know the name of the mine, but not much mm -hmm. else. You have to, the, some stratas are, um, like named, like yeah. say, Suita. um, so, uh, those ones or those ones you, you have to actually, they, they will tell you. Other than that, something like a um, awasedo. Awasedo basically means finishing stone. They don't usually tell you which which strata they are from, but awasedo generally means awase means a uh, to uh, put the final edge on, or the awaseru is to match. So awasedo usually is a bit harder, yeah, and great for the koba or the uh, last bevel, right. But, but unless yeah, they tell yeah. you what yeah. strata it's from, there's there's not much way to tell. Yeah. No. They 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 usually write, and if they don't have them, the stamp. Yeah. That's hard to tell. Okay. Some some places are good um, at like putting their stratas on each each stones. Uh, some are not as good, um, and they're also breaking down to, into the sizes and stuff too, right? Right. But yeah, it's it's really hard. Generally, though, the uh, generally speaking, it's the say for example, um, Ohira Mount Ohira Mountain. They have the uh, very good suita. That's like really good, nice and soft. Uh, do great polishing on the uh, edge. Also, they have really good uh, shiki suita or the uh, uchigumori. They are one of the one of the most um, well known for the uh, sword polishing then a lot of others are like awasedo like they say awasedo other than that the uh, they do have small and they have also they you have to be a little bit more careful they, they have strata as well as the uh the look mm. <laughs> they, right. got, they have nashiji yeah they have karasu those are because of the look of the stone as well it doesn't necessarily mean they are from that particular um, uh, strata. Right. So, so it's, it's harder to know. Yeah, it's hard to know. And even with the same strata, same look, you won't get the exact same results either. So it's, you know. So like with all Japanese natural stones, it, it depends. Depends. I've heard a lot of stories that the, I've heard a few stories that, you know, like, you know, working in a restaurant in Jap in Japan, like su like super high end sushi restaurant, yeah. the uh, the master or mentor or the uh, boss uses this natural stone, but this natural stone is super expensive. You know, yeah, get a couple grand, and this a uh, apprentice or younger guy bought this natural stone for a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, and in fact, a couple hundred dollar one is better. natural stone worked better than the yeah. So yeah. there's those stories, right? Yeah, and it depends on type of edge that you're you're looking for as well. So 
you know, it, it probably, and also they, they look, look at it and decide the value of the, um, the stone as well, you know, based right. on where it's from, which strata it's from and the look, right? And mostly like super expensive ones have already been sold out. Yeah. <laughs> from, so yeah. So is there, you know, do they, do they name them with the idea that it's going to make them more appealing for people to buy? Mm, I wouldn't think so because they no. don't have to. They don't have to do the marketing. To they sell. don't have to try that hard. There's only so many rocks in the world. They don't have to, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The um, yeah, they don't have to. It's like um, I'm I'm going on a little camping trip to the the island really quick. Yeah, and those those campsites on the island, they don't have online booking system because they don't have to. Yeah, they don't need <laughs> they to. to. They're gonna fill them. up. So, yeah, you have you, to call them. You have to do something to figure out. You 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 really have to want it, <laughs> right? To book that place, it's like a natural stone as well. They don't have yeah. to really, you know, they just dig some stones and sort it out. Yeah, and just, yeah, they don't have to do much work. You should uh, you should see if you can find any stones while you're out there on the west coast. Um, <laughs> John, that used to work here, mm. uh, had a stone that somebody gave him from Haida Gwaii, mm. uh, and it was awesome. Um, you know what? The, uh, for finishing razors on. Yeah, because like if you think about it, the uh, this knife culture, um, you know, cutting tools yeah. are all around the world, right? Yeah. It evolved in so many different cultures, and before the synthetic stones were made, um, you know, there are a lot of stones around. So yeah. um, there, there should be some very similar or. You know, Kyoto likes to say, yeah, Kyoto, that, this mountain, Kyoto, is the only place in the world makes that type of the uh, stones. Maybe it's true, but may not be because they have probably have not, you know, been all over the world. You got to try You got to try all the rocks. So yeah. what you're saying is go into your backyard, dig up a rock, and just, <laughs> just, just give it a go. Um, Sven also says, uh, some talk about identifying by color. Mm -hmm. Um the stone that they have goes from uh, pale gray with black specks um, mm -hmm. when dry to a deep forest green with black specks when wet. Yeah. The um, again, the color they, they do say karasu uh, means the uh, karasu means craw, huh? craw. Yeah. So um, you know, it's like so if there is the uh, little black streaks and stuff, they call it karasu. Uh, nashiji is like more yellow uneven cut type of color yeah. so they go with the uh, yeah definitely color of that the stone as well could the uh could the color help you identify the strata a little bit but the um not all the time not all the time it depends on the mountain too right right how consistent the mountain is from section to section to like it's, it's easy for the maroyama shiro suita because shiro white suita with the line with yeah. the screw in it this is pretty easy to Identify, but even with the suita, there is a uh, the stone that's called su nashi suita. It's suita, but it's with, without the, those lines. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's hard to know. It's hard to know. Chikumori is a little bit more usually like a grayish color. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, well, we've done an hour, and I feel like we've packed a ton of information in we just throw um, information yeah i'm gonna have to go back and watch this episode again and take notes because <laughs> i know that i definitely learned some stuff yeah um if nobody has any other questions i think uh if you're yeah. good i think we can start to wrap things up awesome so yeah um, next well, week you, thanks well, for watching. Gonna, yeah, yeah. No, no, go i was ahead. just gonna say next week we uh japanese knife 101 again um oh, they're back Yes, Kevin and Lordy are back. Uh, we haven't seen them together in a while, so that should be exciting. Um, and, uh, yeah, small makers, there's still more stuff coming, so keep yeah. your eye on the website. Manaka um, coming. That's exciting. Yeah. I, uh, I, need to, I haven't bought a new knife in a while. Well, not a kitchen knife in a while. I bought a spider coat a while ago, but uh, I haven't bought a kitchen knife in a while, so maybe I need to, to treat myself to something new. And um, keep your eye out in September.
because Sharp Knives Rock Episode 5 is, is going to be awesome. There's going to be some surprises um, yeah. that are happening. Uh, we're in the, the planning stages right now. Uh, I think we're going to put uh, put Kevin to work um, in this episode. So so keep your eye out. See if he still knows how to use a knife um, <laughs> as well as some other stuff. So Also, the uh, just keep an eye out for the uh, uh, interviews that we, uh, we are right. putting out. Uh, we'll have interviews with the three young blacksmith, interview with the Mariama san from the uh, Hado, and also we did the uh, you know live interview with the Mar um, Masashi uh, Yamamoto san uh, as well, and those are already been edited, and we just need to put some you know some cool photos and uh, you know B rolls. Sweet. <laughs> uh, Edit them up and get them on. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's already been subtitled, so subtitled, so it should be out. So we'll probably have like next couple of weeks. We'll probably have interviews. Sweet. Hopefully. Well, I'm I'm gonna do your regular job because I just put up the caption. So oh no, other way. Down there it says like and subscribe. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Tune in. Uh, so and then you don't miss, miss the uh, you don't miss the new videos. Exactly. Oh, Sven is saying that they need more of me, and I don't. I don't know if that nobody needs more of me. Well, we can just put the uh, the little puppet. Yeah, right bring here. the puppet back. I think yeah. the, the the puppet's the way to go. But <laughs> all right. Well, Alrighty. thanks, Nato. Well, that thanks for watching, great. and yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks for helping out. And uh, we'll see you guys all again soon. Bye bye. Bye.